Welcome to the 2017 Comic Con at Foxwoods Resort and Casino in Connecticut. My name is David Ciccarella. Well, we're going to go inside, talk to special guests, people dressed in costume, and see a lot more. Now standing with the legendary Jason David Frank. How are you be enjoying being at Comic Con? It's great, man. It's been nonstop. Love my fans. Been here for hours and hours, and I just love the love here. So this is my first time coming here to uh, Foxwoods, and I gotta say it was a great event. You did make a cameo in the new Power Rangers film. How was that? Yes, the cameo was great. I actually made two. First one was cut, had long hair, and uh, went back for the second one. So uh, Dean did a good job organizing that. They kind of made me the social media king in the movie because that's what I would do. If I saw something like that, I would be, click, that's me. One of your co-stars from a movie you did a long time ago, The Junior Defenders, Brian O'Halloran is here. Yeah. How was it working on that film and working with Brian? Man, I, I loved, uh, that film goes way back in the days. They, they kind of switched the story up and kind of spoofed it a little bit more than the original script. Um, but I, I thought it was great going out there working with Ali Sheedy and working with you know all these guys and it was great It's just oh, this is a long time ago, and they kind of switched the story up a little bit But uh, he's a good guy. He just came up and said hi to me all the time I see these guys almost everywhere, so it's exciting seeing all these fans wait for you your line is so long What does that mean to you? It means the world to me man It really does and I just love the fans. I love the people But I do want to say one thing that we need to keep comic-con safe we do we need to keep it a little bit more safe than what's been going on around here. So uh, I just want the Comic-Cons to be fun, family-oriented, and safe. You know what I mean? And that's my goal. Um, I've done a lot of Comic-Cons. I love them. I do it for a hobby, not a job. Um, you know, I, I got corporations. It's just This is what I love to do, so I have to treat it like a hobby. If it's my job, I can never get through it. So the stories keep me motivated. Hey, you're a hero keeps me motivated, you were my favorite, and then the life-changing stories that I hear, it's, it touches me, it feeds my soul. That's the reason why I'm here. It's the only reason how I can go all day long and not take a lunch break is that people feed my soul. Now I'm with Brian O'Halloran from Clerks, and how are you enjoying Kineticon? So far it's been great. I mean, uh, here we are at the new location here at Foxwoods, and I gotta say, the, the, the spread of A, first of all, the casino resort is amazing, but also the ballroom that they've put us in here, uh, the premiere, it's just, it's awesome. It's great to see so many guests here. These guys, you know, they're the same guys that do Rhode Island Con, they now do the one out in Colorado Springs. They know what they're doing, they're, they're a good organization, so good to be back here. Unfortunately, recently, Lisa Spoonhauer, Caitlin Bree passed away. Could you share a memory of her and the type of person sh she was? You know, the thing about uh, Lisa Spoonhauer, first of all, thank you for your condolences. Um, she was such a great human being in, in general. No matter what she was going through and being in hospital or whatever, if you ever reached out to her to find out how she was doing, the first thing out of her mouth was always like, well, no, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? And, and so she was always been a sweetheart and, you know, knowing her, the 24 years that, that I had uh, to know her and uh, it was always great when we were able to catch up. Now we weren't in touch like every month or every even couple of months, but when I would catch up with her, it was always great to know that um, she was same spirit, same generous nature that she always was. Recently the clerk's trading cards came out. Right. Did they give you a set? Yes, they, uh, they gave me uh, two sets, actually. Uh, I've yet to open them, so I don't even know who I have in them because uh, these are Upper Deck brand uh, clerks trading cards. And what they did is they contacted almost everybody from the cast to sign certain, like, golden ticket kind of cards. So some of the packs have actual signatures from some of the cast members. And uh, they sent me a couple of couple of hundred to sign. They sent Lisa a couple of hundred to sign. Kevin, Jason, Jeff Anderson, all of us. I can't wait to get home eventually and open them up, to be honest with you. And then there are some that I don't want to open up. I want to keep as a mystery. But we'll see. But if you get a chance, get to your local uh, collectible store or comic book shop and ask for the Upper Deck Clerks trading cards. They're worth it. Now, last time you and I spoke, we spoke about 
Clerks 3 and Mallrats 2. To be honest with you, I'm heartbroken those films can't make it, especially Clerks 3. Do you think after Jay and Silent Bob reboot, we would ever see Clerks 3? You know what? You never know. You, you can't say never, never and you know, in this day and age, so we'll see. I mean, I'm still around, Jeff's still around, Jay's still around, Kevin's still around. So the core four of the band, if you want to call it, are still around. It's just a matter of everybody agreeing if what we want to do. And are you excited to film Jay and Silent Bob reboot in September? Kevin hinted at, and it says Dante, yes. so we know you're in it. Correct. Uh, yeah, he had approached me when we knew that uh, Clerks 3 was not going to be going forward. He, uh, he had talked to me, he's like, look, but I want you to be a part of the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. We're going to do that. And that was before he was even working on the script. So I'm very excited. I just ran into Kevin at the Niagara Falls Comic Con last weekend. We talked for a good 20, 30 minutes of, about things. And, uh, you know, come at the end of this August, the beginning of September, we should start shooting, and I can't wait to do it. I have an overview of what the script is about. I, no one's been given the script yet because he's still working on it. Uh, but it should be a blast, and the fans should not be disappointed whatsoever. I mean... Come this time next year, we'll probably be talking again, but this time how well the J-Bob reboot is. I'm now with Ming Chen from Comic Book Men, and Kami Khan, how are you enjoying it? I'm doing great. It's good to see you again, my friend. Every time I see you, I know that things are going very, very well. So, different setting. I heard they did this in Hartford last year. I like, I like the casino setting, man. I, I played some slots. I don't usually play slots, but I saw Wonder Woman slot machine. I had to do it. Didn't win, but you know, hey, I, you know, maybe there's always tonight. Yeah. It's always tonight. I'm having a great time here, though. Comic Book Man got renewed for season seven. I, I credit you, my friend. We did that interview last time at uh, at the Terracon, I believe. Bam, season seven. Yeah. I play Mule. Yeah, I love it. I want to keep going for like another ten years. So made these beautiful, beautiful announcements uh, keep coming. You moderate a lot of panels at these Comic Cons. I was in the audience for Malcolm McDowell at Terracon. How is that being on stage with Malcolm? That was insane. Now, previously to that, I only knew him from his characters, uh, Clockwork Orange, Star Trek, uh, Entourage, and always playing intimidating characters. So I was a little intimidated. You can't show any fear at these moderate when you moderate, though, because they'll smell it and they'll crush you. He couldn't have been more awesome. You were there. You saw like the magic that happened. I'm really, I'm really glad I was there to do that. I, it was really cool to be in his presence. Told some great stories, like really good, like great panelist. And he's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, who knew? He has this really wicked sense of humor, yeah. like busting balls, <laughs> like, and, you know, he threw me a couple of compliments. It was really cool. Lisa Spoonhauer, Caitlin Bree from Clerks passed away. Tell me your thoughts about Lisa Spoonhauer. Definitely sad news. She, integral part of Clerks, she was one of a very small cast, so each person played a very, very important role in Clerks. Hers really stood out. And afterwards, uh, she didn't really do cons. She didn't really come to Kevin's events. I never, I never even got to meet her. I never met her. I re really wish I could have met her, though. I thought did a great job in the movie and kicked off the whole View Askew universe. Jane Silent Bob reboot starting filming in September, I believe Kevin said. What did you think of that Willy Wonka type uh, theme thing that he did? What did I think about the promotion? Uh, I loved it because it was my idea. So do you want to hear my original idea? My original idea was uh, we were selling these chocolates. And I'm like, hey. Why don't you Willy Wonka this and put in a golden ticket? And whoever wins gets a golden ticket gets to smoke weed with Kevin. That was my original idea. And they wanted to make it a little more legal, shall we say. And they changed it to if you got a golden ticket, you get a walk-on role in Kevin's next movie. Which I think actually works out. And did you get a clerk's trading card set? I've not gotten one yet. I'm waiting. I'm just going to wait. I'll let everyone else get their packs. And I'll grab a pack or two. I really want a Walt Flanagan autograph. You want a wall flying an autograph? I want a wall flying an autograph, yes. You don't have one yet. I, you know what, actually, oddly enough, I don't. I'm now with Matches Malone. How are you enjoying Comic Con? Absolutely fantastic. People are great. The artists and celebrities are fantastic. And who did you meet? Who did you just meet? I just met Ron Perlman, AKA Matt Hagen, Clayface. Take a look at the beautiful action figure of Clayface signed by Ron Perlman. What was that experience like for you? You know, I've known him for different things, but I am a big, huge Batman fan, as you know. Yeah. And um, I can tell. Yeah, just a little bit, you know. And um, I, it was surreal because he was so kind and loved doing, you know, Clayface. And I'm like, yeah, it's like Clay doing Clay because he was Clay on Sons of Anarchy. And I'm like, he goes, yeah, I'm molding myself. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's really good. Great. That's yeah. really good. But he's also voiced so many other characters in Absolutely. the DC universe. That's right. Exactly. Slade. Exactly. Deathstroke from the Teen Titans. And Orion in Justice League. And Orion in Justice League. Exactly. He also played Batman in the video game Justice League. Also, you met one other person here has a Batman connection. Could you tell me who that is? Yes, I met Mark Singer. You know what I'm saying? And he's been an actor in a lot of like famous shows like V and stuff like that. But he also voiced Kirk Langstrom, a.k.a. Man Bat. That's right. So, you, And you talked to him about that. Oh, yeah. I, I went up to him. I showed him the figure. He laughs. And I'm like, well, it's good that you're cured of the Man Bat disease. And he laughs. And he's great. I'm now with Mark Singer, and how are you enjoying Comic-Con? This is one of the best Comic-Cons I've ever been to. It's got a nice quality to it, you know. The, the people, it's sort of, it's big and exciting on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's also very uh, intimate and, and family-like. So it's, it's kind of nice that way. I like it very much. Many years ago, you were the voice of Man Bat right. in Batman the Animated yep. Series. Yep. How was that experience? You know, I, doing, a, doing a classic like Batman is... Uh, is one of the dreams come true of being a, a, an actor, especially when you get into modern media, you know, because those uh, comic books that we used to read when we were kids, now we're, we're voicing the characters for those. So it's, 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 a, it's a very, very fun and, and kind of interesting artistic aspect, but it also is just a blast. It's been my good fortune, I guess, to, uh, to be the originator of some of these characters, you know, and so I, in a sense, I feel uh, a, a strong kinship to them, you know. Last year you were on Arrow and you, you know, dealt with Stephen Amell, Oliver. That was a lot of fun to watch. How was it to film? It was awesome, to tell you the truth, because it's a, it's a very intense storyline. And so there you are with uh, uh, people blowing uh, AK-47s at you and, uh, uh, and uh, getting shot with arrows and, uh, and having to uh, play different kind of complex storylines where on the one hand you seem to be a... Uh, somebody that's on his side, and on the other hand, you turn out to be somebody that's quite, quite the opposite. So, and what are you currently working on? Currently, I'm working on a uh, stage production of *Midsummer Night's Dream* by William Shakespeare. I'll be directing that and uh, and also playing uh, the lead. I'm now standing with Charles. And what's your group? We are the CTV, the Connecticut Mothership, visitors spreading our message of universal friendship. What do you have here? This is, our, this is our video unit, which plays the show continuously. It's a show from the 80s about alien invasion. So that's always on? That's always on. We have it running continuously. What do you have here? This is our Yamaha Pursuit bike, the same type used in the show in a couple episodes. Oh, wow. Screen accurate, down to the details. How long did that take to make? It, it, it was, we just bought it as is. Oh, really? Yes. And, oh. They're, and they're rare bikes, and they were just used by the production back in, the, I think it's an 83, I believe. We have this uh, beautiful Jeep. Yes, our piece de resistance, the laser Jeep, which we built the cannon ourselves based on screenshots from the show, meticulous, you know, low res pictures. We did the best we could. We had all the stars out here yesterday in it, so some great pics of everybody in the Jeep from yesterday. And we're just having a blast. It's been an awesome time. How yeah. was it meeting the cast from V? It was awesome. They, you know, I've been talking to, we talked to Richard and Frank already and Greta, so it was like old friends. Mark we had never met, but he was extremely gracious and wonderful. He must be so happy to see you guys dressed up at the props. He was. He said he'd never seen anything like it. He was really taken aback. So we're very, very proud. I'm now with Kevin Grievous, and how are you enjoying Comic-Con? Oh yeah, this is uh, this is fun. Great. Have you been in this area a lot? Uh, no, never. I've never been to Connecticut before. Oh, it must be really fun. <laughs> well, I haven't seen much, but uh, it seems uh, cool so far. You've voiced a lot of characters in your career. Do you have a particular favorite? Uh, you know what? I guess it would be uh, Black Beetle. You know, that was fun. And Young Justice is coming back for season three. Oh, uh, that's what I hear, yes. You must be so proud of the Underworld series, uh, yes. being one of the creators. Yes, yes, most definitely. Uh, it's been a fun experience. Uh, when I first created it, you know, uh, Lynn Wiseman, the director, didn't even like the idea. Uh, but, you know, uh, here we are five movies later, so that's pretty good. And what are you currently working on? Let me see, right now I'm working on a book I'm doing for DC Comics called Odyssey of the Amazons. Uh, I'm also writing the Underworld series, you know, wow. that I only sell at conventions. So, uh, Lord willing, this will be a collector's item classic. 
and uh, working on various things. And now I'm with Anne Mahoney, and how are you enjoying Comic Con? Oh, I love it. I actually went to graduate school at UConn in stores, so uh, oh, this is, yeah, I, ne I never came here when I was in grad school, but it's like right in the same area. How do you like Connecticut overall? It's cold. Well, I mean, it's not cold right now, but when I was in school here, it was, it was a little cold for me, but it's so beautiful. You were just in Sun Records as Elvis's mother, and talk about the research involved in playing Gladys Presley. So, you know, there's not a lot of any video or audio of, of Gladys Presley. There's um, a few interviews I was able to find so I could get kind of a feel for her accent, which is real specific. And then um, the rest of it was reading books. There's actually a Sun Records book. Um, there's a, a book called, I want to say Last Train to Memphis. I may be quoting that wrong. Read that. And then the rest of it was, was like pictures and reading stories just to understand kind of who she was. Um, and how important she was in Elvis's life. When you go to all these Comic Cons, I know you're no longer on The Walking Dead, but who has you got the closest to? It was always uh, it was always Melissa, you know. And then now Jeffrey Dean and I, you know, when I get to see him at cons, we we got to catch up. He's such a sweetheart. What else is in the pipeline for you? The True Don Quixote just wrapped on that last week. Tell me about that, if you could. It's a modern adaptation of the story of Don Quixote. I play his niece, who he lives with. And Tim Blake Nelson is playing Don Quixote. Um, people would know him from Oh Brother Where Art Thou and oh nuts, I'm gonna forget his other credit right now. That's everybody would know. But he's a phenomenal actor. And the young man playing Sancho in the film is the new sidekick in the Spider-Man film coming out in July. There's a Soderbergh film coming out, I think it's in August, called Logan Lucky. I have a sweet role in that called uh, a woman whose name is Gleema Purdue, and she's um an accountant at the Charlotte Road, uh, Motor Speedway. So I have that coming out. And then hopefully in October, finally, this movie I worked on two years ago called Same Kind of Different as Me will be coming out with uh, Renee Zellweger and Greg Kinnear. I'm now with Ultron. Correct. Oh my goodness. I am so scared right now. You should be. You made yourself? I can't tell you the details of my creation. That is a secret that you mere humans shall never understand. Have you ever dealt with Gorilla Grodd or Solomon Grundy? <laughs> Those beasts? <laughs> I've taken care of all of them. Inferior to my power. Who's your... Who from the Avengers do you hate? Tony Stark, Hank Pym, Iron Man and Ant-Man. Those shall feel my wrath. Oh boy, thank goodness I'm not them. Well, Ultron, you look fantastic. Let me just take a, take a spin around. I want to see that cape. Look at that, look at that cape. Wow. He is, he is almighty. He is powerful. He is Ultron. I am all that, and you are nothing. Feel the wrath of Ultron. I'm now speaking with Gil Gerard. You were just in the Nice Guys movie. Yes, I was. How was that experience? Uh, it was good. The check cleared and everything was fine. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. Everything seems to happen. Very, it was very cold and very late at night. Is it, that must screw up your sleeping pattern, being at 3 a.m. I was curious how actors do that. They work on a different pattern than the regular working folk. Well, I don't know. Somehow you just, get, you just do it. I know when we were doing Buck Rogers, we would shoot a scene in one of the shows, and then I would leave get in a costume for the other show and go in and do the scene there while they were setting up this for the next scene in this show. And I went back and forth and it got to the point where I was like, okay, who are the bad guys in this one? <laughs> Your body sort of realizes that uh, you're not allowed to be sick or anything else because if you're sick, then the show closes down. They can't do that. Uh, I just remember every time we would wrap for the season, within about three weeks, I would be just sick as a dog for like a month. And then I'd be okay. But it's like my body said, okay, you're not working right now. This is not, now I can catch up. I want to talk about something else you worked on recently, Transformers. How was that? That was fun. It was great. They, they came to Atlanta. The, they booked studio there, and I did all this voiceover work. The director and the writer were in L.A., and uh, they, we, they talked to me while we were doing the, doing the thing. It was great. 
Will Friedle, he's on Transformers. He was a big fan of yours. You guys did Match Game. T tell us about your Match Game at Comic-Con. I do it every year. I'm doing it again this year. It's just an idea that the friend of mine actually came up with about three or four years ago. We've been doing it ever since at Dragon Con. It's just become, it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, it started out in a small room, and now we're in a big room that seats about three or 400 people and in the standing room only, which is really kind of cool. And you're the host. I, I host it, and basically we just play match game. I get a bunch of uh, friends of mine who are celebrities on the panel, and then we call up uh, fans from the, the audience, and we ask them these stupid questions, and everybody has these dumb answers or whatever, and sometimes a little risque, <laughs> but everyone has a good time, and then we give up. We got really nice prizes. You are Gene Rayburn. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Long <laughs> microphone that Gene. I couldn't believe Gene Ray. He used to tuck it under his arm and talk. It's like unbelievable. Remember that? Yeah. That long there. Yeah, so-and-so, so, -and -so, so, -and -so. You, you did, did you ever go on the match game, the 70s match no, game? No, no, no. Never did. I was on Hollywood Squares. I really enjoyed that. I uh, did it with Charlie Weaver when he was in the center, and then I also did it with uh, Paul Lynn several times it was it was fun we shot five shows at a time so we'd do a whole week and we'd bring five wardrobe changes and we would do we'd do like three shows i think and then we'd do a lunch break and then we'd shoot the final two shows so that would be the whole week i'm now sitting with felix silla and how are you enjoying being at comic con i'm having a lot of fun man you're 80 years old Yes, I was 80 in January. You look fantastic. I you do, feel fantastic. I do feel great. You know, I feel really great because this is what it makes me uh, motivated. It makes me go uh, enjoy to see my friends, and I enjoy to see to meet other friends. What was the last role you've done so far? Oh my God, it was a long time ago, 1995. I did a movie in uh, Romania. The movie was called The Adventure of Galgamet. It was produced by some Korean director. Uh, I was supposed to be a little creature that loved to eat metal. So and then he started growing up. The more metal he ate, the bigger he got. And all of a sudden he started to eat all the army. And so he became, from me, the little guy, he went to the big guy. It, it, was a, it was like a fantasy movie. And it was my last time I worked in the movie industry. So. Well, I wished you were in the latest Star Wars movies. I, I was very, I'm very happy to be involved at uh, The Return of the Jedi. It was a really, really great job. Uh, I, I love to do that show because I got to meet a lot of new friends, a lot of English actors, uh, especially, may rest in peace, Kenny Baker. He passed away, you know, R2-D2. I got to meet uh, Kenny and I got to meet everyone and we had a lot of fun. So it was very enjoyable and I got to travel all over the place. So it was great. Now, is it great to see uh, Warwick Davis? Because Warwick Davis was only a kid in Return of the Jedi. Now he's grown into a very successful career. Yeah, well, he was like 13 years old when we did uh, Return of Jedi. You know, I was a little tiny little guy. Now, we're, I mean, he really got pretty big, and uh, like you said, he has a very great uh, career, whatever he's doing. I think he's an agent in London. I got an interview, I, I got interviewed about four times from Ken Howard, you know, the, when he directed uh, Willow. They were going to do the film, in, you know, somewhere in Europe, and they called me four, five different times. And they kept calling me, calling me, but they never say, yeah, we're going to use you. They were not looking for me. They were looking for other different type of little people. Mm. Because there's so many different type of people. You know, the dwarf type with the, one of the big torso and the little big head, short arm, you know. You know, I worked on the um, Indiana Jones and Temple Dooms for about six months. And Steven Spielberg was the director. So every morning we got early on the set. And one day he said to me, hey, Felix. If you were this much shorter, I would be using my second ET. I, you know, I'm still waiting. But Steven Spielberg is a great guy. He's a very smart man. Nice. Very good director. Smart. He knows exactly what he likes. What, because the reason he's very smart and he knows what he likes, because he does homework the night before. I tell people that I, ha I got to work with Moses. A lot of people say, who's Moses? I say, yeah, Charlton Aston. I got to work with Charlton Aston on the original Planet of the Apes. He played Moses, and that, that's a joke, you know. I said, like, I know, I got to work with Moses. A lot of people say, Who, who's Moses? I got to work with Planet of the Apes. I got to work with Gil Gerard and Buck Rogers, Adam's family. I said, I mean, in Star Wars, and all these things, and I really enjoyed it. it. Was a great, great career. I enjoyed to work because 
those days, they were great days. The people were very nice. Everybody got along with each other. Uh, nobody shouted at anybody else. We all, all like we're friends. For example, Adam's family, it was a family. Now I'm standing with? Owen Grady from Jurassic World. Well, well, welcome. And uh, who do you have with you today? I have my, uh, my friend here is Ellie. She used to work at the uh, Jurassic World Park after we got, I had to wrangle up the mess from the disaster there. We actually were able to find a lot of the Triceratops and um, we worked, did a little training with them. She's usually at the park where the kids get to ride on her back. But today she's just running around enjoying the people. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, beautiful uh, Triceratops. And uh, it does a lot, you know, look at her. She seems to have a really uh, fun time. Wow. So Triceratops are like dogs. What they do like is they like when you scratch underneath their chin. They love belly rubs. And she also will wave to you. If I tell her to wave, she'll actually wiggle the horn. Let's take a, like, take a look. Ellie, why don't you wave goodbye? Can you wave goodbye? And there we go. I'm now with Jeremy Pelko from The Walking Dead. How are you enjoying Comic-Con? It is awesome, man. It's in a casino, a Foxwoods casino. I've never done a con in a casino. And there's restaurants and bars everywhere, and the people are great. So, And some pretty uh, amazing costumes so far. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Now, has Walking Dead started shooting? We are on season eight. We started May 1st. And who have you from the cast that you got close to, that you weren't close to before? Um, you know, I recently got to spend some time with, you know, Kari Payton, plays Ezekiel, awesome guy, a couple other, you know, members of the cast. I mean, I can't give away too much regarding the first episode, but there's going to be a lot of characters back, and it's been nice. Um, a lot of characters I've never personally had scenes with or dialogue. I'm now, like, smack dab in the middle with them, so it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to see, and so far, so good. It's been really, really fun. It must have been thrill, you know, a couple seasons ago when you took down Michael Cutlets. Yeah, that was an interesting day. I, I'd, I'd never met the guy before, and Michael's such a great guy. And um, But it was kind of weird my first day. It was, uh, hi, Jeremy, meet Michael, jump on top of him and choke him out. So I was like, all right, let's do this. And, um, yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. And you can say that you took him down before Negan. I never thought of it that way. But, yeah, technically I took him down before Negan, you know, and then Daryl came in and broke my arm, but... Um, yeah, I took him down first. Yeah, well, I mean, think about Negan. He was, you know, on his knees. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? That was too easy. Like, right. I actually earned it. Like, I had to, like, tackle that man. And he's not a small guy either. So I took him down. Sorry, Cutlets. Now I'm standing with... Captain Bartleby Hex. Enough said. What do we have for people today at Comic-Con? Well, for us, we have the, uh, we're, of course, the New England Brethren, the Pirates. And uh, like many of the people here, we're raising money for the uh, National Alliance for Mental Illness, Carrie Fisher's charity. Now, um, what we have is we have our uh, famous One-Eyed Willie's Organ, featured in the movie The Goonies, one of the best movies of the 1980s. Give people a little uh, number. That's what I call pirate madness. I'm now with Haru Vamp, and how are you enjoying Comic-Con? Good so far. Super nice people everywhere. Nice. And you're dressed as Black Widow. Yes. What did you do to make this costume? Well, the wig was like nice to work on, mm -hmm. but it was hard because it was pre-curled already. Yeah. So you had to watch out. I actually did the pull cut part and uh, all that stuff. And I still have to add my, my patch on the costume, hand sew it on and stuff. I'm now with Elizabeth Ludlow, and how are you enjoying Comic-Con? I love it. It's my second con, and I, I love it. It's awesome. Have you guys started shooting anything for The Walking Dead? I can't say. <laughs> can't talk about it. You can't talk about it? No. no. But, the, but maybe, maybe you were in Georgia. I can't, I can't speak on it. <laughs> no comment. You were in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yes, I was. Talk about your experience in Guardians 2. It was a grueling, but... Uh, one of the best experiences I've ever had. My prosthetics took about four hours in the morning. Um, the prosthetic they put on my head actually was like also goes around to my neck to about here and it was really tight so it was kind of like choking me a little bit the whole time so that was kind of difficult to deal with and then uh, the contacts I had in blurred my vision so I, did, I had like no peripheral vision and then I'm like carrying a baby and running and doing all this stuff. It was a, it was a really really like grueling experience but it was my favorite one. 
like of all my acting career probably. And how was James Gunn as a director? He's so nice. The thing about it is everyone is so nice. I, like you would think someone of that stature, you know, might have a little air about them, but it was literally like he's the most down to earth like He's just like a scientific kind of like comic book, you know what I mean? That type of guy, like it works for him and it was really nice. The other day actually I saw online that he did the dancing for Baby Groot. He was the reference dancer for that. So I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, he's in, he's like, he has a part in every intricate like piece of the movie. Like he sat with me on my day the whole day and just like coached me through it, talked me through it. And yeah, he's a really cool guy. Now I'm standing with an assorted characters all, all sorts of from DC and Marvel we have female Captain America Harley Quinn Spider-Man we'll get back to you in a second because I'm kind of curious and Catwoman how are you guys enjoying Comic-Con oh it's awesome it's an awesome family event and we are so happy we'll be able to be here with our with our family and looking forward to have more fun Thank that's you. fantastic how about you um I like Comic-Con because it's really fun and you get to see a lot of um, people from different movies. Harley Quinn's your favorite character? Yes. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I can tell. Um, Spider-Man, you look a little uh, different. What are you celebrating? Oh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Comic-Con, so uh, I decided to be a Metador. Why, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was out last night right. and uh, the zipper got stuck, so, uh, you know, uh, we planned on coming and uh, might as well, you know, get dressed up, you know, so I put all my Metador stuff and uh, yeah, here we are. What are you holding? This is our skull. Uh, when I'm fighting bulls, uh, most people like to uh, have, you know, most Metadors have the red cape and, you know, I have so much red on as it is. Uh, I went ahead and took the, uh, the skull of, uh, of Grey Skull. Why did you decide to dress as Catwoman today? I want to do like Catwoman because I like Catwoman a lot, and I kind and I also like her costumes a lot as well. Fantastic! You having fun today? Um, yes. I like to, I like to see all the uh, different artists here as well. I'm now here with Tom Mock. How are you enjoying Comic Con? Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, Foxwoods uh, Casino, huge. I didn't know they had a place this big. Uh, first time here. And now in The Last Dragon, you worked with Julius Carey. Unfortunately, he passed away several years ago. And so did Vanity and yeah. so did Little Brother, yeah. But how was it working with Julius Carey? Oh, it was great. He was so funny. Show enough. What can you, what can you say? You know, I loved him. And how about Vanity? Fantastic. Beautiful. Great spirit. And tell us a little bit about your book. Yeah, this is my autobiography right here. Uh, you know, it was I wrote it because so many years went by, and everybody asked the same question: When you make another movie, what's going on with you? So I figured I owe fans, uh, you know, something that they could really get something from. You know, it's I talk about all my embarrassing moments, so you know you could read about those, and you get it on Amazon. You know. I grew up in New York and in Europe. I'm black and Italian. Family picture here. This is a kickboxing championship, high school, and karate magazines, you know, all that stuff. And I got all kinds of stories in here. Look, this is a short film that it's going to the festival called I've Seen Things. Detective story, all acting. I directed and wrote it. So that'll be on the festivals all around the country. And uh, I'm shooting a teaser for a film I wrote called Master. So that will be a, a teaser, will be there to help the packaging to gain financing for the full length feature. I'm now with Eddie, and what did you bring to Comic Con? Uh, Speed Racers Mach 5. It's wow. right there. Speed Racer Mach 5. You brought it. Tell me how it was made. Carefully. Carefully. It's on a 79 Corvette, and everything's molded together, and everything works. It must be getting so many positive reactions at this convention. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Everybody's appreciating it, bringing it here. It runs and drives, too. Do you see any uh, Speed Racer cosplayers coming up and getting photos taken Absolutely. with Absolutely. It was two yesterday. Can you believe Speed Racer would drive in a car so similar to this? They even have the helmet you can be to be Speed Racer. Well, this is absolutely fantastic. If people want to know more about the Mach 5 Speed Racer, your Speed Racer, is there any way they can go on Facebook or anything like that? Little Dude's Garage, PGH at 
gmail.com. I'm with Spencer Wilding. How are you enjoying Comic Con? Oh, I'm loving it. Such an experience. It's amazing. Now, this is awesome. you are Darth Vader. I'm the Dark Lord. Rogue One, right? Rogue, Rogue One, yeah, that's right. Yeah, two of us play the part, me and Dan, but it's awesome to put the big black helmet on and feel the presence. Did you watch anything uh, from David Prowse and the original films to... Well, Darth Vader's Darth Vader. They're never going to change Darth Vader. There's one, there's one Darth Vader. There have been plenty of actors that work, work his suit over the years, and he'll choose his prey to play. And how was it holding the lightsaber? Well, you know, it's, a, it's great. A man thing holding his weapon is awesome. It's big, it's bright, hot, long, and it did a lot of serious stuff. Talk about being in Doctor Who. Well, Doctor Who is another awesome production. It's been going for over 50 years, and it's awesome to be asked to come and play some of the monsters in Doctor Who. The first creature I played was a creature, and it was a, a minotaur in the God Complex. Yeah. And then the next one was the Wooden King, Christmas Day special. That gave me a bit of a headache because I had a whole forest living in my head. Have you ever had that? Not a nice feeling. Uh, and then the last one, he was a really serious dude called Skaldek in the submarine the cold, in, in, in the Cold War. He was the most honourable warrior from planet Mars, right? And he didn't mess about, right? So when he... When he was in a massive fight with his daughter in a galactic fight and he fighting away and then there was a big flashbang wallop and then all of a sudden he wakes up in a submarine 5,000 years later because it went off course, his ship boom, 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 got caught in a whirlpool and bang straight into the uh, ice pack somewhere in the cold place in the earth. So when he woke up on the, and the, like I say he's the most honourable warrior and he wakes up in a nuclear sub but he, he, there was nuclear weapons on the ship so he just wanted to go bang on that red button get rid of this race of yeah. human disgrace. That episode took place in 1983, and I believe, was David Warner in that one? That's right, yeah, not in 1983. Yeah, and David Warner, is what, what, a, what a living legend he is. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome to be working with him, such a funny guy. And Doctor Who filmed in Cardiff, Wales. You're from Wales. North, North Wales. Yeah. North Wales. People think North Wales, well, Wales is like this big, but it's not. It's like that big. You know what I mean? It's not that big. And it takes, like, for me, to get from North Wales to South Wales is like five and a half hours wow. on a train with two carriages and you've got 33 stops, you pass millions of sheep, loads of grass banks and trees and you become best friends with a guy pushing the uh, trolley along going, tea, coffee, biscuits, you know everything about him by the end of the trip, everything. Are you going to be in any of the season 10 episodes well, coming up? I don't know at this time, but you know, I, I've got a good relationship with the Doctor Who uh, a, a, a world and I just love to work their creatures again absolutely awesome and I've done a lot of other shows you know what I mean I was, I've done like Harry Potter films yeah I was a werewolf in Azkaban and, and I was in Batman Begins I burned down Batman's house in Batman Begins who were you in Batman Begins? I was League of the Shadow Warrior 1 when, when you're coming out of the house the manor I burned down Batman's house Found it. I was in Game of Thrones I was the first white walker you see I was like you know running around the forest chopping heads off and I was the Wolfman, in the Wolfman. As Benicia Della Toro, Toro stunt double, but you know, a lot, a lot of the work was myself as, as the Wolfman. I like Howling at the Moon. How long did that makeup take? Oh, long, about five hours. I was in the makeup chair at half one in the morning, on set, about five hours. I was in the makeup chair at half one in the morning, and then I'd be on, well, I would have been in the makeup chair at half one. I get to the, I get to on set for like half seven, right? So people would be coming into work at half seven in the morning going, oh, oh, and I'd go, you've got no idea, I've just been on makeup chair for like 30, what, five hours? And this went on for several months. And finally, what else are you working on? What else would you like to promote? I could tell you, but I, I would have to kill you. I'm getting oh, I'm choked out right here. See, he's choking me. <laughs> As you can tell, Comic-Con is a great event. 
and I hope you come next year with all the wonderful celebrities, cosplayers, and so much more. My name is David Chicarella. Thanks for watching.